With features like a big four-thirds sensor and a second telephoto camera, the DJI Mavic 3 launch was exciting news for drone enthusiasts. But it also raised eyebrows because key features like active track and quick shots weren't available when it went on sale. Since early reviews like our own were incomplete, potential buyers couldn't get the full picture before paying up to $5,000. Now, after two major firmware updates, all the Promise functions are here. I'm going to test them out and discuss this trend of releasing incomplete products and then updating them later. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Let's dive in and find out. In our initial review last year, Samuel and I tested the mainstream Mavic 3 in the Flymore combo package. At the time, we lauded the video quality, obstacle avoidance, long battery life, and more. However, the coolest AI features were still unavailable. This time, we've got the same drone with three firmware updates, the most recent being from the end of May. First off, let's take a look at the new AI features introduced in January, including Quick Shots, Active Track 5, Master Shots, and others. We'll also take a look at the so called Nifty update to Active Track that allows it to fly closer to obstacles with a smoother trajectory. When we tested the new DJI Mini 3 Pro, we found that it could run circles around the Mavic 3 for subject tracking because it's smaller and more maneuverable. But the Mavic 3 also seemed more conservative when approaching obstacles. So how does it work now with the latest updates? It's the same as before in normal mode, but nifty mode is something else. It doesn't always do exactly what you want, often flying higher or filming from a different angle than you programmed. That can happen when it tries to avoid obstacles, but other times it seems to come up with extra creative options all on its own. The result is often some interesting shots, if you don't mind some AI improvisation. In terms of obstacle avoidance, it's more daring than before. It cuts much closer to things like leaves and branches, which allows for more interesting shots. But it also puts the Mavic 3 in harm's way, which isn't ideal with a two to $3,000 drone. Where Nifty is more useful, we found, is with manual piloting. By engaging it, Samuel was able to fly in tighter spaces without the drone chickening out while still getting basic obstacle protection. That allowed Samuel to just follow his subjects and let the drone worry about avoiding obstacles. Oftentimes, it flew very close to them, which gave us some very thrilling footage. Quite frankly, we were blown away with how well it worked. The January update also introduced Quick Shots, letting you do pre-programmed camera movements like Droney, Helix, Rocket, Circle, Boomerang, and Asteroid. On top of that, the June update lets you shoot Log or HLG while using Quick Shots, except for Asteroid mode. These features are great for social media selfies and actually not bad for grabbing some quick footage. For instance, if you want a perfect looking orbit, you don't need perfect piloting skills. Just make sure you're in a clear area without many obstacles around. Master Shots is a similar feature, letting you capture pre-programmed moves. It captures longer shots than Quick Shots though, and creates a little finished video at the end all set to music. It was updated in January with 4K 60 frame per second shooting, manual exposure adjustment, and more. Panorama offers wide angle, 180 degree, and sphere modes, a sort of cool feature for occasional use. Finally, the latest version of Hyperlapse does a flying time lapse with some cropping to reduce shakes and jitter. It can produce some really pretty shots, particularly for cityscapes with moving clouds and other dynamic situations. The latest version optimizes stability, making for even smoother shots. However, if you have a lot of wind, the drone will still tend to move around a bit and kind of ruin the shot. Next, we'll get into the bulk of updates that arrived in late May. Many of the changes are focused on making the telecamera better. That starts with adding 50 frame per second shooting for 4K and 1080p, up from 30 frames per second before. You can also now adjust the ISO and shutter speeds. 
DJI also introduced burst, raw capture, manual ISO, and manual shutter speed adjustment for photos with the telecamera. Those things do make the telecamera more useful and allow for more options than post, but they don't address the relatively low resolution and mediocre optics. At the same time, the main camera got a few key updates, like 200 frame per second slow motion at 1080p, HLG for in-camera HDR capture, and a 3x digital zoom. Combined with earlier updates that added raw photos, improved color accuracy, and more, the Mavic 3's image quality makes it useful for a wide range of artistic work. In some cases, it can replace much bigger drones that pack physical cameras at a much lower cost. And while the telecamera isn't quite good enough for high-end content, it's ideal for things like bird spotting, industrial work, and more. Finally, it's worth noting that DJI appears to have fixed the GPS issue that caused a slow home lock on startup. This is a problem that has plagued a lot of users since the launch, since it means that you can't use the drone as quickly as you might like. All of these updates have boosted the Mavic 3's capabilities considerably. That begs the question of why it went on sale without those things in the first place. I saw plenty of complaints from potential buyers, YouTubers, and others to that effect. I'm personally fine with it though. The key features like image quality were present from day one, so professionals could immediately use the Mavic 3 to create content and make money. It's also better to perfect complex features rather than release them half-baked, I think. The biggest problem I had was that users couldn't assess the missing features ahead of purchase. To solve that, companies like DJI should at least get them to reviewers in beta so you can see how they work before they arrive. I'd be fine if DJI kept rolling out new drones this way, and several Mavic 3 buyers I spoke to agree. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and for more on technology, check out Engadget.com.